Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're gonna be in ships. We're gonna be flying around, trying to take out the enemies in the cockpit of our own fleet. Well, today we're taking a look at Flip Ships. This is a game from Renegade Game Studios. It's for one to four players. It is a cooperative dexterity game where you can be working together, trying to take down the mothership and all of the enemies. Today we're doing a rule school. I'm gonna teach you how to play the game and set it up rule for rule so that you don't have to spend time reading the rule book and get to the fun faster. So without further ado, here we go. Flip Ships is a one to four player cooperative game where you're going to be flicking ships onto enemy ships or into that big mothership you see there. You can flip them off the table or off the launch pad. And as you hit ships, you're able to get rid of them from the fleet. But be careful because at the end of the round, some ships can move all the way and attack you. Some ships will shield other ships and other ships need to damage. You're trying to remove all the enemies from the game and reduce the mothership down to zero points of damage before you get down to zero points of damage. But as you get down weaker and weaker, you get better ships. And better ships mean better special abilities that all ships of different levels get to help you through the cause. To set up first, we're going to put together all the interlocking battle zone tiles. Now, depending on the amount of players, you'll use certain sides of these because they're all double sided. Here we're going to play with four players, so we're going to use this board here. If you were playing with a two player game, you'd use this as the bottom of the board. You will then continue to build these interlocking boards, putting them together like a puzzle until the numbers go from zero all the way up to 20. If you're building the two player board, all of the pieces will have two little yellow circles in the bottom right hand corner. But in this case, they don't have them because we're doing the three or four player board. If you'll be playing solo, you have to decide whether you're going to be controlling two, three or four players on your own. And then you'll set up the board and the rest of the game according to that. And when you're done, it will look something like this. You want to place the bottom of this structure so it's right near the edge of the table. Next, you'll take the pilot cards of the different levels, one, two, and three, and put them in like piles, all number ones, all number twos, all number threes. Each of these piles will get shuffled individually with themselves and then get placed face up in a row. You'll then flip up all the pilot cards, level 1's on the bottom, level 2's just above, and level 3's on the top, next to the bottom of the board. You'll use as many cards as there are amount of players. In this case, we're playing with four players, so all four cards at each level is used. If you're playing with less players, remove the additional cards, place them back in the box, because they won't be needed. Each player is going to select a color and take all seven ships of that color. Noticing that there's different types. The smallest ones are all your level 1 ships, the second highest are your level 2s, and the biggest ones are level 3s. You can randomly determine player order from left to right, and each player is going to take two of their level 1 ships and put them above the top pilot cards. Each color will do that. And if you're playing a two-player game, you'll actually put all three of your level 1 ships here. Then you'll move down and place both of your level 3 ships on the level 3 pilot cards, the level 2 ships, you have two of those, onto your level 2 pilot cards, and your last single level 1 ship on the level 1 pilot cards. Each color is staying the same column of the pilot cards. And again, if you were playing the two-player game, there would be no ships in this level 1 because they'd all be ready above all the pilot cards. You'll also want to take the docking bay and place it just above all the ships, and you can put together this first player marker and start it with the one on the left. Next, you'll take the entire enemy deck and you'll shuffle it together. Then you will create a deck depending on the amount of players and the difficulty that you'd like to try. In the first game, I suggest that you play Training Mission. And here, if you were playing four players, you would take 40 cards into the deck, but use this table to set up the difficulty and the player levels that you'd like. Any amount of cards over what's needed for this game can be discarded to the box. Next, find the targeting computer card that looks just like this. You'll be using this to make measurements on the board throughout the game. Now at the top of the board, you'll see these two moon regions. You're going to take five cards from the enemy deck that you've made, and you're going to place them out each of these rows, so there'll be a total of 10 cards out there. You want them to be roughly half inch apart, and you can use that targeting computer card, this little spot right there, to make sure that you're half inch. You can eyeball it as well, but if you want to be precise, you can use that card. Next, you'll build the mothership to look just like this. 
And to know the front is a little bit shorter than the back, that will help you figure out which piece goes here. And the mothership will go in the front. You have this picture in the back. Now there's two of these in the game. One of them has an exclamation mark. You'll put that one back in the box because that's only used for one of the speed variants. You'll then place that mothership behind the middle card in the back row. Next, you'll take the city health marker, which is the blue marker. You'll place it on the left side of the board at the number 20. This is for standard or training missions. Uh, you'd place it on the 15 if playing expert level, and you'd place it on the 10 if playing the elite level. You'll then take the white mothership health marker and place it on the appropriate space based upon the amount of players and the type of mission. In this case, we're playing with four players and we're doing a training mission, so we placed it on four. Next, you'll find the big red launch pad and you'll place the stickers on it just like that. Now you can play the game with this launch pad. If so, you'd place the bottom edge of this atmosphere up so it's about two inches away from here, and you'll be flicking ships off this as opposed to the edge of a table. You can use this in any game. The object of the game is to take out enemies on the board and through the entire deck, as well as get the strength of the mothership all the way down to zero before your strength gets down to zero. The flow of the game is each player going in turn order is gonna take all of their active ships, which are the ones above the level three pilot cards, and they're going to flick them in any order to try to take out enemies, and then we're going to resolve attacks. Now you can flick off the edge of a table if you have a good 90 degree angle, or if you don't, you can use the launch pad as shown in setup. What you'll do is you'll be flicking the ships to try to hit the enemies. Now in this case, I actually did hit this one here. As long as a ship is on top of a card, it is going to destroy it. If you're just touching a card but not on it, it does not do damage. Also keep in mind, you can actually do damage to multiple cards at a time if it's touching more than one card, but this one was right about there. Now when flicking, if your ship does not get past this line, this is considered the atmosphere, you can pick it up and do it again. If that happens three times, then you'll take your ship and place it in the docking bay and it's done for the turn. So if I had misfired three times into the atmosphere, I would place it in that docking bay like this. Also to be a legal flip, the ship has to flip at least over once as a revolution. Once the active player has flicked all their active ships, we go on to resolve the attacks. Now by default, enemies that were hit with these ships will be discarded, like this one here. It was hit, this enemy would be discarded out of the game, and this ship will be brought to the docking bay. It would go to the docking bay like this, and the enemy would get discarded out of the game. Now there's a couple of special instances here where a ship would not get destroyed, like this, because adjacent to it is a ship with this shield icon. This shield protects all ships orthogonally adjacent up, down, left, right from this ship. So even though this one is on this enemy, it does not get resolved and, and killed off the game because it is being protected by the shield. Subsequent player this round would need to be able to also hit the shield in order for this to trigger. If there are ever two cards that have shields that are orthogonally adjacent to each other, they have no effect on each other. So this shield will still block this one. You have to take this enemy out before this one, and you have to take this enemy out before this one, but the two adjacent shields have no effect on each other. The next player is blue. Let's say they hit these two ships. They'd resolve their attacks because all their active ships are done. In this case, this one has hit the shield, so this one is gone. And then this one will now be gone because the other player is on it and there's no shield protecting it. This one is another special case. This is one that needs two hits by the end of the round of all the players, shown by these two X's. So right now, that ship does not get resolved. Let's say the next player goes yellow. They flip one ship on this and one miss. This will just get put back to the docking bay because it missed everything. And this one now has two hits, so it will also be put out of the game and these two would go to the docking bay. Now let's say the last player is going to try to hit the mother ship. The first ship missed like that. Let's say the second ship that he has hits just like that. They would take the ship out of the mother ship, place it in the docking bay, and then move the mother ship down once because he hit it with one ship. And in this case, this ship missed, so it would also be moved to the docking bay. All players have now ended their turn. Now once the last player of the round has resolved all their attacks, we then go to the enemy marches phase. Starting with the column closest to the moons, starting front to back, we're going to move all of the enemy ships up. This means it moves two, this moves it means one, 
And this means it moves all the way as far as it can go towards the atmosphere, but it will stop in front of other ships. So this one is going to move too. So here we're going to move this too because it has two arrows. You know where the sections are because of these red lines. So we're going to move it two sections. One, two. Special note with two arrows. If there is a ship in front of it, it will push and move ships in front of it. This one will move all the way as far as it can to the atmosphere, but it will stop if it hits another ship. This one will do the same, but there's nothing in front of it, so it goes all the way to the atmosphere. This one goes one. This one has nothing in front of it, so it's gonna go all the way to the atmosphere. This one's gonna go two, one, two. There's nothing in front of it to push, so it ends like that. So in the atmosphere, anytime you have ships there after this point, they're going to attack. You take all the numbers on all the cards there, and you're going to add them all up. In this case, we have a total of four. So these ships are gonna do a total of four damage. So here, the health marker is gonna come down one, two, three, and four. And the ships that did damage are going to get shuffled back in to your enemy deck, so they'll come back later. Now you'll see as this came down, it actually went into a spot that has a little red ship there. And you can take as much damage that sometimes it might go on or through more than one of these ships. Anytime this happens, you're actually going to gain more ships. Each player will be able to take a new ship starting from bottom and going up. So let's assume it went all the way down to the 12 as we just showed, and you had passed through two different ships. Each player is going to get their, in this case, their last level one ship and one of their level two ships. All of those new ships are placed above their respective colors as new active ships. And after that enemy marches phase, we go to the cleanup phase, where each player is going to take all of their active ships that are here and all of the ones that are in the docking bay. We will then move this to the next player, so this blue will be the first player for our next round. You'll continue to go one, two, three, four. Next, during this cleanup phase, we're going to fill up the back two rows, starting with the back, going from right, closest to the moon, to the left, and then the next row from right to left in all the empty spots. So after refilling, it might look something like this. So you'll continue going through player turns, which are flipping ships and resolving attacks, and then after player turns, enemy marching and cleaning up, until at the beginning of a round, there are six or less enemy ships in play. Once that happens, this will be the final round before the final assault. In this last round, all ships are thought to have this, which means they'll move as far as they can without being stuck in back of another ship. And so at the end of that final assault, they'll come all the way up like this, and they will do double damage. So instead of doing six damage, this does a total of 12. And during this final round, no reinforcements will be given, even if you pass or land on one of the reinforcement spots. However, any time during the game, as soon as the last enemy ship in the entire game has been destroyed, the round ends immediately. Now this can happen even if you started the round with more than six enemy ships. During the final assault, each player is taking turn order like normal, and they're trying to take out the mother ship. Now at this point, for each damage done to the mother ship, this will come down one. If they get it down to zero, they win. However, if they haven't, the mother ship attacks all the way down to zero, and you have lost the game. Also note that in this final assault, no special abilities can be used. We haven't yet talked about those, so let's do that. Each of your level ships have a special ability, depending on where your colors are on these rows. If you remember at the beginning of the game, we had red here. So every level one ship, as you flip it, has the ability to do what this says. Same for the other colors. As you get to level twos and you have level two ships, for example, those ships will automatically have these abilities that they can use to trigger. For example, if you attack the mother ship, mark it as a hit, and then reflip the ship. Now, all of these are pretty self-explanatory, and there's more details on page 11 and 12 in the rulebook if you need further clarification. And of course, there are special abilities for the level 3 ships as well, and whenever an ability talks about the targeting computer, it may specify the long or the short side. This would be the long side, and then this would be the short side. Well, I hope this helped you dive right into flip ships faster, enjoying it much quicker than you would have. If you have more questions, I've placed a link in the description of this video. If you place your question there, I'll do my best to answer them, but the publisher also will be notified of your question.